Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is my full review of the Canon RF 24-240mm, a 10x super zoom lens for the full frame EOS R mirrorless system. Originally announced in mid-2019 and costing $899 or pounds, it's one of the more affordable lenses in the catalogue, and not only the first native RF super zoom, but with a range that had no previous equivalent in Canon's EF DSLR lens catalogue. Sure, Canon made an EF 35-350 back in the day, and later on a 28-300, but they were both substantial L-series models, costing roughly three times as much and weighing considerably more. The RF version is much simpler, a relatively budget 10x zoom that's way more compact, lighter, more affordable and starts wider too. Indeed it's a perfect general purpose lens for the cheaper EOS R bodies, in particular the EOS RP for which it's already become a popular kit option. In this review you'll see what it can do. Before going any further, let's see that 10 times zoom range in practice, starting with useful 24mm wide angle coverage that can capture a large subject like this stately home, before zooming in to really concentrate on distant details. I half expected to see somebody walk past that window. To put it in perspective, here's the range from the same position using the RF 24-105 STM lens, which obviously starts with the same wide angle coverage, but falls way short of its reach at the long end. Here they both are side by side for a direct comparison, and in a nutshell, that's the obvious benefit of the super zoom on the right. The ability to capture both wide and greatly magnified views with the convenience of a single lens. I can imagine many EOS RP owners mounting this lens and rarely if ever taking it off. The 24-105 STM on the left and 24-240 on the right are the two most affordable zooms in the RF series to date and popular kit options, although unsurprisingly the longer range of the latter makes it a heftier option. The 24-105 STM measures 77 by 89 mm versus 80 by 123 mm for the 24-240, while they weigh 395 and 750 grams respectively making the 24-105 STM on the left almost half the weight. The 24-240 barrel can be locked in its widest focal length for transportation, although it didn't creep in my time with it. When zoomed to 240mm, the barrel extends by 70mm, and despite using two sections, it felt fairly sturdy. That said, as a lower cost lens, there's no weather sealing on it or the 24-105 STM. The filter thread measures 72mm and behind the zoom ring is a smooth control ring that can be switched from manual focus to a custom option set in the camera menus. The smooth operation is fine for manual focusing, but I miss the clicky feedback when customised to adjust settings like the aperture or ISO. Note that the more expensive RF lenses in the system generally have two separate rings for manual focus and custom control, allowing one to be smooth and the other to be clicky. But for simplicity and cost, both the 24-240 and the 24-105 STM combine theirs into one switchable ring. Oh, and as non-L lenses, neither are supplied with lens hoods. The optical design of the 24-240 consists of 21 elements in 15 groups. It has seven diaphragm blades. A closest focusing distance of 50 centimeters at the wide end or 78 centimeters at the long end and it includes optical stabilization which Canon claims is good for five stops. Here's the view when composing with the 24-240 set to 50 millimeter on an EOS RP without any stabilization. Remember that body doesn't have IBIS. And now with the optical stabilization on the lens switched on from its barrel and you can see it's made the view that much steadier. Here's another example, but this time at the longest 240mm end of the zoom range, again without any stabilisation enabled, and now with it switched on. So considering the lower priced DSR bodies don't have IBIS or built-in sensor shift stabilisation, the optical stabilisation on the 24-240 is essential, especially at the longer focal lengths, and as you can see it worked well in my tests. Focusing is performed by a nano USM motor and you can see it in action for stills photography here, again recorded through the EOS RP first at 50mm f5 where you can see it's very swift and accurate. Compare it here to the STM focusing motor on the 24-105 STM lens, again set to 50mm f5, and you can see that the 24-240 in the earlier clip was visibly a little snappier at focusing. Now for focusing during movies where the camera slows down the process for a smoother looking result. The nano USM motors on the 24-240 are also virtually silent as you can hear even when using the built-in microphones on the EOS RP. 
To be fair, the STM motors on the 24 to 105 mil were also essentially silent when refocusing in this test. The 24 to 240 is also driven successfully by face detection on the Canon bodies here at 35 mil f4.5 again using the EOS RP. Now it's not a particularly challenging depth of field to work with, but as we know from earlier tests, face tracking is something that Canon's bodies are very good at, so no problem at all here. And now seems as good a time as any for a quick vlog test with the lens before delving into my full results, sample images and final verdicts, so please do stick around. Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs and this is a quick vlogging test with the Canon RF 24-240mm, a super zoom lens that I have mounted here on the EOS RP filming in 1080 at 25p. So this is how it looks with optical stabilisation only, as you know the EOS RP is an unstabilised body and I'd say it's doing a fair job, although I am also having it supported with a full size tripod pressed up against my chest here. Okay, now on with the rest of the review. Moving on to aperture, I'll explain the figures while showing you a focus pulling test video at 35mm 4.5 from near to the closest focusing distance. Now the 24-240 has a variable aperture of f4 to 6.3, which only works at the maximum f4 aperture up to 27mm, at which point it closes to f4.5 until you reach 44mm, then it closes to f5 up to 70mm, f5.6 up to 109mm and then to the minimum of f6.3 between 109 and 240mm so a large portion of that zoom range is at f6.3. The aperture is of course controlled electronically but it's available in fine 1 8 stops for movie use. To compare the potential for shallow depth of field effects, here's the 24-240 again at 35mm gradually closing its aperture from the maximum f4.5 at this particular focal length down to f11. Now let's return to the maximum f4.5 version on the 24-240 before switching to the 24-105 STM lens which coincidentally also operates at a maximum of f4.5 when set to 35mm. Now I didn't perfectly match the zoom on both lenses here but as you might expect they're sharing a similar optical style here with a little visible outlining and some texture within the blobs so there's nothing really to tell them apart here. If you desire bigger bokeh blobs at the same focal length and distance you'll simply need a larger aperture such as the RF 35mm f1.8 STM seen here wide open at f1.8. That said, you can zoom the 24 to 240 to a much longer focal length to deliver bigger blobs, even though the aperture is reduced to f6.3. So here's what you'll get when shooting at 240mm, f6.3 from its closest focusing distance. You can also achieve a similar effect with the 24 to 105 STM at 105mm f7.1 as seen here, again from as close as it would focus. But while the RF 35mm can't zoom to a longer focal length, it can focus much closer than the other two zooms. So here it is as close as it will focus, again wide open at f1.8 for much more dramatic bokeh blobs. To compare their maximum possible magnification, I photographed this ruler with each lens at their maximum focal length and as close as each would focus. So here's the 24-240 at 240mm as close as it can focus. So this is the maximum magnification that's possible for this lens. And now for comparison, the 24-105 STM at 105mm and again positioned as close as it can focus. And finally, for the RF 35mm 1.8, of course at 35mm because it can't zoom, but focused as close as it can go, which is much closer still. So this is the maximum magnification for this lens. Now to measure and compare the optical quality for distant subjects, I photographed Brighton Seafront with both zooms on the EOS RP at a variety of focal lengths and I rotated the camera so that details went right into the corners where the lenses typically struggle. Don't worry, I wasn't drunk. You're looking at JPEGs out of camera with all lens corrections enabled and that's important as I'll mention in just a moment. First up, the 24-240 at 24mm and its maximum aperture of f4. Looking closely in the middle shows a good level of detail which shows only very mild improvements when close to stop or two. As you move into the corners the details do soften a little at 24mm but not deal breakingly so and interestingly when you close the aperture the quality remains much the same so from this result I'd say the 24-240 delivers its best results when at 24mm pretty much out of the gate at f4 with little to no benefit in detail when closing it down. Compare the middle of the frame to the 24-105 STM on the right and you'll see they're showing a similar degree of detail again, a result that's also reflected as you move into the far corners. 
Now, dedicated pixel peepers may notice the 24 to 240 is arguably a fraction superior here when both are at 24 mm f4, but I'd essentially call it a draw here. Now let's zoom both lenses in a little to 50 mm, starting again with the 24 to 240 here at 50 mm f5. Taking a closer look in the middle again shows a decent amount of detail, and again closing down the aperture makes little to no difference to the quality in the middle. Moving out to the corner and the story is much the same. It's a tad softer than the middle, although not as much so as at 24mm, and I'd say closing the aperture to between f5.6 and f8 will see a minor boost in sharpness to match the middle, at least in my tests, but again the 24 to 240 is performing pretty well out of the gate at 50mm. Compare the middle of the frame to the 24 to 105 STM on the right when both lenses are set to 50mm f5 and again they look pretty similar but this time in the corners the 24 to 240 actually delivers a slightly sharper result. Now you can match this result by closing the 24 to 105 STM down a couple of stops to around f11 but at their maximum apertures the 24 to 240 is a little crisper in the corners at the 50mm focal length. Now you're looking at the 24-240 at 105mm f5.6 and again all looks well in the middle when you take a closer look. Closing the aperture down further didn't make a difference in my tests. The corners were also well behaved at 105mm even with the aperture wide open and again there was no perceptible gain to closing the aperture any further. Now here's the 24-240 on the left and the 24-105 STM on the right, both showing crops from their middle portions at 105mm, which of course is the maximum focal length for the shorter zoom. Also note that the 24-105 has a maximum aperture of f7.1 at its longest focal length, making it two thirds of a stop slower than the 24-240 at the same focal length. So here you're looking at f5.6 versus f7.1. I'd say the 24-105 could arguably be described as a tad more contrasty, but they're really very similar. Moving to the corner tells much the same story, and again neither lens improves noticeably when closing their apertures any further. For my final analysis, here's the 24-240, now at its maximum focal length of 240mm, so it'll be viewed in isolation here. Punching into the middle of the image at the maximum f6.3 aperture shows there's lots of detail and no complaints with the image quality to mention, and as before no visible improvement if you stop down the aperture. Heading to the corner tells the same story with a decent degree of detail even with the aperture wide open and no softness really to worry about. Again there's no discernible benefit to the sharpness of an image like this if you were to close the aperture down on this lens. Ok, as I wrap up this review I'm going to show you a slideshow of images I took with the RF24-240 on an EOS RP body and they're all JPEGs out of camera. You can download the originals via my review of the lens at cameralabs.com. The Canon RF24-240 mil is the first native super zoom for the EOS R system, providing the convenience of a 10 times range taking you from wide angle to respectable telephoto, grabbing large buildings, landscapes or group shots at one moment before zooming into distant details the next. There's no need to carry multiple lenses, nor waste any time swapping them, not to mention reducing the risk of dust entering the body. Now, longer ranges often come with optical compromises, but in my test the RF24-240 performed pretty respectably, delivering good results across the frame, throughout the range and even at its maximum apertures. Sure, it's not bitingly sharp or contrasty like the higher end lenses, but equally there's no obvious aberrations, at least on out of camera JPEGs to complain about. To be fair though, Canon is performing some fairly substantial lens corrections behind the scenes with this model. If you turn them on and off in camera or when processing RAW files, you'll immediately see significant corrections for geometry and vignetting, that's darkening in the corners, being applied. Indeed, when set to 24mm without any corrections, you'll actually see the edges of the imaging circle intrude quite comfortably into the far corners, so there's a significant amount of pixel wrangling taking place. But most of us will have the corrections applied automatically and be none the wiser in day-to-day -day use. Ultimately, the RF24-240 may lack the glamour and ultimate quality of the larger, heavier and of course more expensive pro lenses, but in practice it actually delivers pretty solid performance with unrivalled convenience at a decent price. It took a while, but Canon now has a pair of compelling kit zooms for its more affordable EOS R bodies. The 24-105 STM is the lightest and cheapest zoom for the system to date, while the 24-240 becomes the do-it-all travel zoom that could provide almost everything many owners desire. 
Couple either lens with a fast 35, 50 or 85 to achieve some nice shallow depth of field effects and you could be very happy. Right, that's it for another lens review. If you enjoy what I do, don't forget to subscribe and if you really like it, you can always treat me to a coffee or treat yourself to my in-camera photography book. There's links for all of these below, along with checking the latest prices of this lens. So let me know what you think of the 24-240. Are you tempted by the convenience of a super zoom range or are you more into shorter ranges or even fixed primes? Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.